To temporarily make the current app size smaller so you can reach everything on screen, go to settings, then general, followed by accessibility. Scroll down until you see an option called reachability. Now on applications, you can swipe down the home bar to shrink the size of the application. It will remain at this size for three to five seconds unless you interact with it. To shorten the on-screen keyboard size, effectively making it a one-handed keyboard, you need to go to settings, general, keyboard. There is a one-handed option here and you can turn it on for either left or right-handed mode. To turn this option off, simply tap on the chevron at the opposite end of the keyboard and to quickly turn it back on again, force touch the emoji symbol in the bottom left-hand corner to again choose right or left-handed keyboard mode. You can change the default volume rocker actions by going to settings followed by sound and haptics. In the ringer and alert section, if you toggle off, change with buttons. When you next press the volume rockers on your home screen, this will now change system volume rather than ringer volume. By default, your notifications are protected until you unlock your device with Face ID. You can change this if you want to, however, by going to settings followed by notifications. The top option here is show previews. If you tap that and then select always, now when you bring up the lock screen, anyone can see the notification content without having to unlock your device. On Apple Maps, if you double tap and hold the screen, you can then swipe up and down to zoom in and out. And since Maps is also a landscape application, I can show you that notifications are still accessed by swiping down from the top of the screen, while the control center is still accessed by swiping down from the top right of the screen. The auto brightness setting. You would expect to find it in settings followed by display and brightness, but that's not the case. Instead, you have to go to settings, general, accessibility, and finally display accommodations. I have no idea why it's here, but there it is. To type to Siri instead of talking to it, go to Settings, General, Accessibility and then Siri. Toggle the Type to Siri option on so that when you next press and hold the side button, a typing option will appear instead of speaking to Siri. To create an Apple Watch face out of a picture in your photos, simply press the Share button in the bottom left and then choose Create Watch Face. Unfortunately, my round logo is not going to cut the mustard on a square watch. If you want to enable dark mode on your iPhone 10, go to Settings, General, Accessibility, Display Accommodations, Invert Colors, and then toggle on Smart Invert. Currently, I would describe this mode as a work in progress. The more you navigate through screens, the more you will see things don't quite look right, whether it be icon colors looking off or ghosting of images. But have a play around with it, and hopefully Apple will improve it with future software updates. When you pick up your iPhone 10, it will automatically show you the lock screen. This is called the raise to wake feature, but you can turn it off by simply going to settings, brightness and display and toggle off the raise to wake feature. Now when you pick up your phone, the lock screen will not be displayed. Similar to the raise to wake feature is the tap to wake feature, which shows the lock screen when you tap on your iPhone 10 display. To turn this feature off, you need to go to Settings, General, Accessibility, and scroll down until you see the Tap to Wake toggle. Once toggled off, when your device is locked and you tap on the screen, nothing will happen. You can quickly switch between applications by swiping left and right on the home bar at the bottom of the screen. But if you want to do it in a more elegant fashion, you can drag the bar up and down, which will move between applications just a little more slowly. You can also start app switching from your home screen by swiping left to right at the very bottom edge of the screen. If you go to the general settings followed by iPhone storage and then view applications in the list, some will include an offload feature that uninstalls the application but doesn't delete data. Very handy for if you need storage space but can't afford to lose valuable data. If you just can't live without a home button, you can create a virtual one on screen by going to settings, general, accessibility, and then assistive touch. Toggle it on and a floating button will appear on your screen. Next, tap customize top level menu and remove all of the existing icons until you have just one left and then tap on it. Change this to home and then back out of the screen. Now your floating button, which you can put on any edge of the screen, will act as a home button. You can add new effects to your live photos by simply swiping the live photo up when you're in the photo gallery. 
there are a few different filters to play with, this one is Bounce. If you want to stop those annoying pop-ups in applications that ask you to rate them, go to settings and scroll down to iTunes and App Store, and then scroll down again until you see in-app ratings and reviews, simply toggle it off. When you move applications on your home screen, you can move more than one at once. Hold an app to put your home screen into layout mode, then drag one app to pick it up and tap on other apps to stack them onto your pile of apps and you can then move them around all at once. And finally, despite the presence of the notch at the top of the screen, applications do still include a jump to top feature if you tap on screen just below the notch. Now, if you found this quick guide to things you didn't know about the iPhone X useful, make sure to check out my complete guide that includes over 100 tips and tells you everything you need to know about the iPhone X. Thanks for watching, enjoy the rest of your tech day, bye for now.